What's up? It's your boy Mixed by Aladdin. You're tuning in to FDMG, and we're doing the exclusive interview. Stay tuned. The Broadway Band. Just got a shipment of the dopest dope I've ever smoked. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. Well, I got started in high school. I was DJing and stuff, and I did a couple parties, and I used to have, manage a group called Reckless Sounds. And basically, I had like two or three artists, and we'd put records together. We used to do ciphers with the best artists of Palm Beach. We used to rack up all the views, and then basically from there, somehow, some way, my cousin knew somebody that was a bodyguard for Jay-Z, which is the most random fucking shit ever. So from there, they gave me the number to Lenny S. from Rock Nation. I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with Lenny S. Um, legit, you feel me? I was speaking to Lenny S. We used to speak on the phone. And we used to exchange texts. Basically, I was 15, 16 at the time. So he was encouraging me to make music with my artists. Because we used to get like 30,000, 40,000 views. This, this, and that. Like, get that little phony slip and slide record deal email. You know, I slip and slide email everybody. God damn it. So fuck it. We was fucking with Lenny S. And he would just give us encouraging shit. Like, yo, just do the Katy Perry, Chris Brown type of shit. That's what he was doing back then. R&B, hip-hop type of shit. So from there, I kept doing everything. And then the group fell apart. I feel like I wasn't doing enough. I was just promoting and shit. So I got into engineering. So when I graduated high school, I enrolled into SAE. And um, SAE, I met Mev the Renegade. Now, Mev the Renegade was a key point of my career. You feel me? Within the last two months of SAE, I met Mev actually in the elevator going up to class and he just talked to me he was like oh you graduate next month come to the studio i came to the studio that same day end up becoming the intern there and i worked there with my ass off no pay you feel me worked with all types of shit worked with gunplay at the studio um tracy t from mmg back then fucking philly freeway chung my dog chungy cartier um met brought a lot of people out in that studio Shit, that studio is actually owned by Philly, uh, not Philly Freeway, I'm bugging the hell out, by True, True Life's brother. It's um these niggas uh, bowing them from the warehouse and shit, so I was over there working my ass off. From there, I met Rushon at the Mogul Studio. Rushon's a big, multi-platinum, international fucking producer, bro. When I met him, bro, it was just from knowing him from reggae music. Because growing up, I'm West Indian, I listen to a lot of reggae music and shit, and dance also. Everybody that listen to reggae know, know Rush On, bro. So I met Rush On. He didn't really, he was popping, but he wasn't really popping at the level he is now. So we used to do mad records together in that studio. We fucking cooked up this record with uh, Tory Lanez. And that's where he seen my, my shit. Because I used to go in, but when I was working with Tory Lanez that night, he really sat down with me. And we mixed that shit. And he was just putting his little pointers in there. And I was bringing everything to life. So shortly after that, he made his own studio called Mars Music. I don't know if he runs it anymore, but... He brought me over there. I used to manage that studio. That's why I worked with Faruko. Um, Kevin Gates used to slide through there. Everybody, YNW, Melanie, uh, Melly went through there. Everybody used to go to that studio. And they still do. You feel me? It's a fire it's a fire studio. But I did a lot of work with the Latin artists and the reggae artists like Taurus Riley. I worked with Taurus Riley over there. Um, he's a big multi-platinum artist and shit. So it came from going from like hip-hop and I started mixing into the reggae thong and the Spanish and the reggae music. And then from doing all that shit, bro, especially going into the music that you, you grew up listening to, I kind of wanted to make my own music. Shit, bro, I think last year, I really wanted, I, I ended up just booking, like, pure time for myself at the studio for the first time. Like, before, it was like, I'm working at the studio, I'm using the free time, I'm there, whatever. Like, last year, I decided, yo, I'm going to book, like, a little eight-hour session, or a six-hour block, I'm sorry. Book a little six hour block, sat in there, cooked some stuff up, I had a camera guy, shot my first video, whatever. And I dropped it and then I started getting um feedback and it was it was good feedback. You feel me? That was the first thing I did. I didn't really buy the beat or per se, like, you know, actually do a full song. I just did a little quick freestyle, put it out, see what people think, and before people think like, oh, I know this kid all his life and now he's rapping and shit. Like he's been behind the scenes and now he's rapping and shit. But I got good feedback. So I was like, all right, fuck it. And at the end of the day I didn't really care anymore about what other people was thinking. I started just doing what I wanted to do. So I just started booking the studio every other week, and probably every week, and just knocking out tracks. But right now, it's more the dance hall, dance hall, hip-hop vibe, you feel me? I, I've been trying to find my fucking, like, my vibes right now, and it's more like dance hall, hip-hop. That's what I'm leaning towards. Yeah, probably, yeah, 100%. 
And I'll be in the studio, and the first thing I pull, I pull into, because I listen to a lot of fucking Lil Durk, Nav, um, like artists like A Boogie and shit. So when I'm in the studio, I'm putting in some nice hip hop joints. You I'm putting some nice vibes, some crazy 808s, but like some dark shit. So I'm sitting there, I'm trying to drop some shit, and sometimes they don't come to me. I throw in a little dance hall type of vibe, dance hall beat, and that shit just comes right out, and I'm just recording it. It's more fun to me, too, when I'm, at, when I'm riding through, um, like driving back home and shit, I have more fun listening to that dance hall vibe. And I, I understood, too, like, when I'm listening to reggae music, like, I don't know how other people are, but when I listen to it myself, I don't really care who the fuck's singing it. Like, if you mean, when we're in a club, we're in a car, y'all playing some shit, and it's vibing. I don't really give a fuck who's singing it. It could be Vibes Cartel, Popcorn, I don't care. Yeah, actually, I'm just doing straight music, bro. Like, as of right now, I haven't really thought, like, show-wise and all that extra stuff, I haven't really thought about that. Like, my main concern right now, I want to make good music. And I want I want the good, you know, I want streams. I want the good numbers. I don't really care about the bread that it makes. Cause, you know, these streaming companies, they ain't going to pay you shit anyway. Like, you can go get your little five bands from one million plays from Spotify, whatever. But it's, it's going to take a while. You're going to have to probably put in a lot more for just a promo. So, but other than that, I'm just, I just want to get streams, bro. I just want people to view my shit and like it. Inspirations. I'd have to say a boogie. Um, I'm brown as fuck, so this is kind of a given. Nav, you feel me? But I've always wanted. That's another thing. I always wanted to make music before I've even heard of Nav. But when I see Nav doing it, that's another thing that made me want to get into music. Cause you don't really care about your social image or where you're from and stuff. You just put out good music and shit. Um, young Thug, heavy. I fuck with Young Thug. That's an inspiration. Um, shit. And I'm gonna still stick with DJ Khaled. God damn it. Khaled, Khaled know how to put a record together, bro. And that's the mentality you got to have, bro. Oh, niggas going to hate me, cuz. Um, probably, probably Biggie. I'd say Biggie, just because I vibe to his music more. Um, I'm not going to lie. I didn't really listen to hip-hop growing up. It was Now I'm thinking about it. When I was like 11 or 12, I was more into like Green Day and like shit like that. But I remember on my fucking news, I have an iPod Nano, and somewhere in that iPod Nano, I just had Biggie songs. And I just remember being on road trip listening to Biggie. So fucking Biggie, nigga. <laughs> Waffles. Just, and I, I, this happened. This is crazy that you asked that question last week. I finally made the switch over to waffles. I've been eating pancakes too long in my life, God damn it. So waffles for sure. Belgian waffles. Belgian. Hey, not not no ego waffles. Belgian waffles. Um, mixed by Aladdin. Uh, you know, it's, you can't fucking spell it. I mean, Aladdin. A L A D I N. Not the other Aladdin. If you remember, always no copyright strike. Aladdin. A L A D I N. Mixed by Aladdin. It's fucking Instagram, um, Facebook. And if you want to contact me for music, if you want me to mix something, mixed by Aladdin at gmail.com. That's the best way to contact me. If you hit me in the DMs, it's probably going to get fucking lost. So email always, mixed by Aladdin at gmail.com. Shit. Shout out to Frank Socorro, god damn it. Because, you know, shit, he's the GOAT. And, you know, I did learn a lot from him in SAE. So, I mean, without his knowledge, I probably wouldn't even be able to pursue what I was doing today. Uh, shout out to FDMG Studios for this exclusive interview. And definitely shout out to fucking art. Two more people. Rush on for letting me manage that studio and giving me the best fucking internship ever. And my dog Falcone that gave me, you know, my first paid position as an audio engineer at Mogul Music Studios. So, free Falcone and shout out to you, nigga. God damn it.